Hi everybody, welcome to Joy Embroidery. Uh, we recently started doing our own embroidery and we obviously wanted to make our own designs. So we went ahead and purchased my Sonet Platinum Edition or the Platinum Level. And we had zero experience uh, with digitizing, very little with embroidery. So we wanted to uh, start making our own designs and we have learned a lot these past couple weeks. Um, it wasn't easy. Um, I looked for a couple of YouTube videos, but they were extremely basic. So I wanted to go ahead and show you guys how I did this project. It's very simple. There's nothing complicated about it. It's basically just fills. But for those of you out there who are uh, looking to do your own logos or, or whatnot and don't know where to start and have my Sonet or are thinking about getting my Sonet, uh, this video should help you at least uh, find out what the basics are and maybe help you decide if this is something for you. Okay, so here we go. All right, everybody, so here we go. Now, one of the things that happened to me was when I downloaded the software, all I got was an icon on the desktop. And you double click on it and it'll bring you to this folder. So I was like, what? Now you can go to here, embroidery, and it'll give you all the options, um, several things, but for simply just getting started on digitizing what we want to do today um, we're gonna go ahead and go to tools we're gonna keep it simple today I don't want to go too far into depth of what my Sona has um, there is a lot of stuff I'm gonna save that for other videos uh, so today what we're gonna focus on is fills okay so we're gonna go to digitizing I'm gonna double click on that now the computer that I have, it's it's a pretty good computer. I um, I don't know what it is about the software. Maybe it's just not optimized to open quickly. You know, I, I I don't care. I'm just letting you guys know that don't worry about this. Maybe not opening as fast as as all your other software. So when it opens up, uh, you're gonna have a few options. You can create express embroidery. Now what this does is you can drop in a picture and it's gonna automatically do fills, outlines, sand stitching, everything that they add it needs to do in no certain order just to get the job done. Um, what that means is that if you've ever done any sort of embroidering, you'll notice that on the back of your embroidering project, you're gonna have a lot of jump stitches. Now, this does not optimize jump stitching. It does not optimize hardly anything at all. Like I said, it's just gonna give you uh, a file to be able to embroider, embroider and it's not going to care if it looks good on the machine. Uh, it just depends on the picture um, that you give it. Uh, so I don't really recommend that. Uh, there's create express trace. Uh, obviously going to trace out. Now all this depends on the picture, the background that you have. If your background has well-defined areas to trace, it's going to work well. If it's a very busy picture, it might not work as good. Express border, it's going to border stuff. This is where we're going to um, be working on today. And actually what I work on all the time is you load or create a background picture. I just load something I copied or I saved from the internet that I want to create. And I can work, work off of that. Uh, load your existing design or start a design with no picture. You start with nothing and you just get creative. So we're going to start from here. Click next. Uh, load a picture. And these are just some pictures that I've just used to mess around with. And this is the one we're gonna do. Click OK. And next. And we're gonna click on automatic. What this is gonna do is automatically crop the picture to cl as close as possible to the, you know, obviously the main part of the picture. Now, in this picture, that specific one, there's a sort of gradient gray in here and the software doesn't pick it up really good to be able to remove it but most pictures that are black white at least it's going to be able to remove all of the white so typically this shouldn't be an issue but it really won't be an issue because it's so light and it doesn't really interfere with uh, the software so we're going to click next now you, if you want to make the design as big as whatever hoop you choose you choose uh, you can do so uh, for our sake we're going to use 120 by 120 but this is where you would change your hoop size. So whatever hoop you have, uh, you would select it right here. And if it was, say, the 240 by 150, you could select if you want it rotated to be a horizontal or natural, so it was vertical, whatever you want. 
Um, again, usually if you have a Topaz, uh, a good a machine that allows you to rotate uh, on the embroidery machine, you can just do it there. Or if you need it to be set like this before you take it to the machine, you can do all that here. But 120 by 120, we're going to keep it like that. Now, if you want to enter design size, you can make it very specific. If you want it only to be a few inches big, you can, you know, drop it down to 60. And what's that give us? 2.3 inches. So whatever you guys want. If you want to do specific height, you can change that. So let's just do that. If you want to Google exactly what uh, what 60 millimeters is or 2 inches is in millimeters, you can do that. So I just guessed 2.3. Sounds good to me. So we'll just click finish. And it's going to go ahead and drop that background in into the hoop. And there you go. So what we're going to do is go ahead and fill all this in, this in, and this. Okay. So what I have found to work pretty darn good is I go to Quick Create. Now here you can create the pattern fill. There's a few different kinds. This is just the quick select ones. There's a bunch of other ones I'll show you right now. And if you want it to be border, to have a border, you can add a border. For this example, we're not going to put a border, so no border line. And there's two options. There's a quick stitch or a quick stitch auto hole. The first time I did this, I was like, okay, this should work. I clicked it, I dropped it in there, and it filled everything. I didn't realize that I had to you know, compensate for this hole here. So quick stitch with plus auto hole. Click on the dark area. Now, this menu here is going to help you define the area much better. Obviously, you can tell there's issues here with the outline of the hole. So we'll raise it a little bit. That already looks way better. Now, you don't have to get too picky of making it extremely accurate. Um, if you've done any sort of embroidery, you're going to realize that the embroidery machine doesn't stitch exactly what you see in the, in the, the design. So if you take it up too much, it's going to do the whole square. So now it's like, I don't care what it is. I'm going to fill it all in. But you're going to help the machine or the software fill it all in. There you go. So a nice outline. Good hole. A uh, number of points. If you want it to be very, um, I guess, a lot of points. So you can pull, push, pull, whatever you want later. Sure. Okay. Or if this looks good enough to you and you don't need to be having a lot of details going into there, um, that's fine. If this was a very jagged design, I think high would work best, but I've found even low works pretty good. So we're going to click OK. So there we go. Boom. Easy. Now, next, we're just going to do the crown here. Same thing. Don't worry if it's if you're like, oh, there's a little bit of black here. It's OK. You know, if you want to pick it up a little bit, that's fine. Boom. Now let's do the lamb click here and just just for just for the heck of it we'll bring it up okay now oh, it seems a little too thick but it's okay um, so if you noticed all I did once I clicked this tool once I just clicked it I selected on the menu what I wanted and it clicked OK and then I went to the next area now, what you want to do, you're probably like, oh, you, like, what do I do? Escape, enter, I can't figure this out. Enter works, you can also right click, okay? Or worst case scenario, you just click, click, click down here on edit points and click on the part of the design that you want to edit, okay? So I guess we'll go over these points real quick. We're not gonna edit them too much right now, uh, but just to let you know, these circle ones are gonna create nice arcs, smooth lines. And these square ones are going to create corners and nice straight lines. So that's why right here, you know, it created a nice line. So it chose to use the square ones. And these are going to create nice arcs right here. Same for this one. And same for this one. Now, I'm not a professional at embroidering and embroidering software. But in my mind, if I wanted to create something, I would want it, you know, top, bottom, bottom up left to right left uh, right to left either way i would want it to do it in order because what's going to happen if you do this guy up here and you're stitching stitching and it stops 
and then it jumps to this one that's going to create a big jump stitch in the back so I have wanted to avoid that so what we have here on the left side is the order that everything gets stitched now this is where my expertise or my lack of exper expertise um, kind of lacks I don't know if they would recommend doing this guy first but I think it would because this way you get a nice you know just a lot of the stitching done and you don't have to worry maybe my logic is wrong maybe it's correct but I'm gonna go ahead either way I'm gonna start from doing for this one let's just start with the crown so we'll go up here and everything that I said last 30 seconds you can probably ignore this is me just thinking out loud okay so what we'll do we'll start from the top and we'll, let's just end it down here okay that's just where it's gonna start and this is where it's gonna end I you know you can do it here maybe I don't know I'm just gonna do it here now we're gonna start and now let's start it here just so it has a very small jump stitch and obviously now we're gonna bring this all the way down let's just bring it somewhere like right here there we go and bring this here and this one yeah why not end it there cool so that's a very basic way of creating fills and also just to make sure that your salt your file is going to embroider in a way that makes sense now we're going to go a little bit farther deep into the details about the fills and even the underlays we'll go here all we did now if you if you're stuck you know using this tool or you have if you went somewhere else and you're stuck with something else on your mouse that's not this just go down here edit points and that'll fix your problem so we want to edit the crown and all you got to do is just right click and a menu is going to come up it's going to give you your pattern fill and your borderline we don't have any borders so don't have to worry about that oops there we go now pattern i have found pattern three to work pretty good it fills it in pretty darn well i have no issues with it and here we have all sorts of patterns for your fills a lot of really cool ones there's sailboats rockets hot air balloons all this fancy stuff hearts a lot of really cool stuff um, I haven't tried one any of these myself yet I have heard that this makes this makes your embroidery time uh, a lot longer just because there's so much details in the fills so for this example we're just gonna keep it at three okay now if you wanted to rotate the angle I think some of you more expert embroiderers will know that it's important to keep some of these fills at a certain angle um, I don't remember exactly what angle it should be at, but let's just do 45 just for an example. Underlay. Underlay is your foundation. This is what's going to be stitched before the filling comes in. The cool thing about this software is that it automatically puts the underlay the opposite direction of what your filling is going. So your, if your filling is going to right to left, your underlay is going to be going up and down. So your foundation is going to be set the opposite direction at all times. So for this one, I like to leave it at low. It's not a very big area that it's going to cover. Um, I haven't found that it causes much trouble on my t-shirts. So I just leave it so, like that. And density. The more dense... <laughs> this is what always kind of tricked me. If you want to go up on density, it's going to separate your stitches a lot. So let's just see what that looks like. Yeah, there's not a lot of fill. So we'll just keep it at 2. Okay, we'll, we'll venture this into, late, into this later, but I think you have an idea of what this is going to do. Um, so that's that. Oh, we got to let's put underlay again. I don't know why that got taken off. And okay. There we go. And we'll go to this guy too. So, sorry, again, I just clicked on this guy once with my left and then right click and it'll bring up this menu. Let's change this to 45 as well. And since it's a bigger since it's a bigger area, let's go ahead and put it to medium. We'll give it a little bit more foundation just so the stitching kind of has a good place to hold. There we go. And then we'll go to this guy too. Right click. Well, pattern three is good. 45. And low is okay. Cool. So you can change so this direction if you want but I'm just gonna keep it 
using these numbers just to keep it simple. Cool, so that's the fill. Uh, now all you have to do is once you're done here, you can you know file save as, save as your project here. And I already saved it before, so I'm not gonna over my, overwrite my old one, but if we wanted to save it, we would save it, name it. Now, if you think that's good, if you wanna go ahead and give it, give it a run on the machine, all you do is go up here to export. And depending on the machine you're working, you're gonna wanna save it as one of these files. I use VP3 for my Topaz 40, so that's what it's gonna be. Um, I don't haven't touched any of this stuff. Um, no, I'm not gonna worry about that. And then I just click OK. And again, I'm gonna name the file wherever I want it to. And if you have you know, one of the higher end models, that connects to your Wi-Fi and you can uh, connect your embroidery machine to the Wi-Fi, great. But for my case, I have a USB drive, so I just drop it in my USB drive and then walk it back over to my embroidery machine and let it rip. All right, guys? So in the next video, I think we'll go a little bit more in detail as far as maybe adding some details to this. Not very much. Um, maybe just some embossing. And yeah, so let me guys know what you guys think, if you guys have any more video requests. Um, there's some things I have learned. I'm not quite an expert at this, but if you guys are still trying to learn about this, just got this software, um, please leave me a question in the comments and I'll try to answer it the best I can. Okay. Thank you guys. Have a great day. God bless.